Hey folks, Animana here, and today we've got my Fallout 76 15 Tips for Beginners Guides. Uh, so this is for players who want to get into Fallout 76, who have never touched a Fallout game before, or maybe they're just a little bit rusty. So we're just going to go over some basics to get you started or back on track. Now first off is using your lamp. There's a lot of areas that are very dark and it does become nighttime quite often as all days work. But anyway, if you hold the menu button, it is going to turn on your lamp on your Pip boy or if you've got something like a minus helmet it's actually going to turn the lamp on on that also and it will show on the character when you look outside of the first person view to the third person view as you can see here i can just actually look and see it illuminated on the display right there now with most fallout games hunger and thirst is something you need to be aware of as you can see in the bottom right there i am thirsty completely parched and I've also got a little bit of food that I could do with as well so I can top this up by using some of these items such as purified water and the mutt chops and chicken noodle soup and all those but do note that some items do have radiation so it's probably best to use something like a rad x so that you can just pump your character with the food and liquid and it's going to top it up with the minimal radiation build up so you can just use that maybe use a diluted rad away afterwards we'll get to that later actually so stick around junk items as well as weapons and armor that you are not using is going to heavily weigh down your inventory so what i do recommend is quite often going to a crafting bench or a station and then scrapping down all of your junk items what it's actually going to do is going to reduce the weight down to the raw components and these wonder glues right here as an example Scrapping that down to adhesive is going to reduce its weight down to one fifth of the original weight of that Wonder Glue item. So, if you have lots of those items, it is going to build up over time, so scrap them down to save yourself some space. In older Fallout games, the VAT system has been a system that you can use to kind of slow down time and get an advantage. However, as this is a real time game, you no longer have that ability. It still has some use, but but I'm actually finding it most useful by when I'm wandering around in the wilderness and I'm worried that there's going to be an enemy around, I can use that that skill by pressing that shoulder button or whatever your keyboard button is. And if there's any enemies nearby, it's actually going to target them. Just note it has to be within your field of view as well, otherwise it won't trigger. When you level up in Fallout 76, you are given a choice of a stat card or a perk card for each of the stats. Now, you can equip as many of these cards as you have points for. And just to note, a rank 1 card is worth 1 point, a second rank is worth 2, and a third rank is worth 3. So, to use a rank 3 card, you actually need 3 points. For example, in Agility, I've got two cards there. One is a 3 and one is a 1, so that equals 4. So, I can equip those cards because I have those points. However, if I wanted to equip two Agility cards which had 3 for each of them, I wouldn't be able to because I don't have the budget for that. So, just keep that in mind. Now, this one's probably a no-brainer for a lot of us, but this comes down to choosing which armor or weapon is going to be the better one. You can see here where it says damage resistance on the right, you've actually got some points that have plus symbols or minus symbols next to them. That is where you can choose which one is going to be better for you. You can also note on the value as well, it may be higher. That's probably a good indication it's going to be a better piece of equipment. Basically, pair it up to what enemies you're going to be facing, what resistances you want, and what kind of damage you want on your weapon. Some perk cards, such as Scrounger, aren't actually passive abilities. They are abilities that you need to press a button for to trigger, like I have just there with that duffel bag. Some of these bags for the Scrounger skill actually let me press that search button and it's going to look for more ammo. And there are different situations for different cards, but more or less they're going to work the same. Even something like Cannibal, where you can go and munch on an enemy corpse to get a little bit of health back, you need to press that button as well and it's going to mark it as such. Now, while we're talking about components and junk and scrapping and all that, you can actually mark these on search. So if you go to your item list and then go to your component view, it says it on the bottom there. I can go to, for example, oil. I can mark that as tag for search. Again, it's marked on the bottom of the screen with the buttons there. I can mark that for search. And then what it's going to do is whenever I go and find an item in the world, if it has that component within that item, for example, up here I've got an oil canister, it's going to put a magnifying glass next to it, noting that this is an item I'm actually looking for. Similar to the VAT tip, what I recommend is having a melee weapon on hand and also a ranged weapon. So what you can do is you can equip one and then instantly equip the other one. And then what you're going to be able to do is you can toggle between them by pressing, at least on PlayStation 4 and Xbox, the left 
D-pad button, it may be different on PC controls. But the way I do this is I'll have a ranged weapon for the distances. And then when I get up close, I can switch to a melee weapon and do quite a bit more damage. And it's actually gonna save me quite a bit of ammo too. And while we're talking about conserving our resources, if you go to a chemistry station, you can actually dilute down your stim packs and your rad away and also rad X and items like that. So what this is gonna do, it's gonna reduce its ability by half, but you don't always need a full heal or you don't always need to reduce your whole health bar of radiation poisoning. I know this isn't as difficult a survival game as something like Rust, but these health items are still pretty rare and hard to come by. So it is worthwhile, at least for one or two of them, diluting them down so that you've got some for healing small health amounts and for ones that are healing large health amounts or radiation interchangeable. Whatever your situation is, you'll have something on hand. Fallout has always had a pretty robust crafting system for weapons and armor and also other items such as grenades. But in this one, if you want to get any of those mods for your weapons or your armor, what you need to do is you need to break down weapons of that class. For example, here I've got some pipe revolvers and if I break those down, I'm unlocking mods to be able to make those and add them to weapons. And some of these are also locked behind some plans, I believe. At least crafting specific weapons is definitely. But you can see here, I've broken down enough double barrel shotguns so that I've got the reflex sight mod that I can add to replace that glow sights or even the standard sights if you've had that. So for example, this is going to allow me to have a little bit more accuracy in aiming compared to manually aiming down that sight. I've actually got a dot here that I can look at and figure out where those bullets are gonna hit. Camps may seem like some daunting base building mechanic. While they are, you can also use them as a quick, free, fast travel and a way to, I guess, access a stash is what I've been using it for. So I could put my stash down, I could put some crafting benches to scrap those weapons, to store those junk pieces, and then also having a bed to get that experience boost, the instrument to get that fine-tuned buff as well. It is definitely a good little way to, I guess, get back on track and dump all your junk. Now alternatively, you can access a red rocket or a train station and those places on the map are always gonna have a stash if you don't wanna to go to the trouble of making a camp. Watchtowers are a cool little way to reveal some locations nearby. If you find this icon on the map and you head out there, climb to the top of the tower, you are gonna get an action prompt when you go out onto the balcony. I've already done this one, but what happens when you press that prompt is it's gonna survey the area and it's gonna mark a few locations on your map unless you've already been to those locations. And the only downside is really that you can't directly fast travel once those have been put on your map. You need to actually go to those locations, have them revealed, and from then you'll be able to fast travel to them. But it's at least gonna save you some time in finding where locations are on the map. 76 is actually the first online Fallout game. So it does have a few little weird quirks. And one of those is that if you go to a container and you're in a team, your teammates can all loot from that and they're gonna have items in that container they can all access and have multiples of. However, when it comes to items that are loose out in the world, like these dinner plates or these pots or this chef's hat I've picked up, those are a one-time instance. So if I pick this up, and a friend wanted it, well, it's too bad because I've got it in my inventory. The only way they can get it is if I am a nice enough guy and I'm gonna drop it on the floor. So do keep that in mind when you're playing with a team. And I am sure those are gonna cause some fights between some players. Another big tip is that if you find any recipes or plans out in the world, you do need to actually read them from the menu, which is underneath items, then notes. And uh, once you've read them, it's gonna add it to your list. You can get multiples or duplicates. This one here is a duplicate for me, so I can go and give that to a friend now if they didn't have it. Do note as well, 0.25 weight, they are all gonna clog up your inventory if you just keep them in your inventory and don't actually read them. So either sell them or give them to a mate. Those were my 15 tips for beginners to Fallout 76, also for the Fallout series in general. If you are playing a Fallout game for the first time in this game, I do recommend going back and checking Fallout 4 and Fallout 3 because they are much better games in terms of storyline. This is more of just an online romp with your mates just out in the field like I am here with Bree here and we're taking on a Scorch Beast at level 15 or 18 or something like that. So we managed to take it down with some service to air missiles which was intense at that level. But anyway, if this video has been helpful, give us that thumbs up. Comment below if you have some other tips for beginners to a Fallout game such as this. Otherwise, uh, maybe subscribe and hit the bell to get more guides. I will also be covering 
Pokemon Let's Go shortly too. Anyway, I'm Anamona. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day, morning, evening or night, wherever around the world. And I'll catch you next time. Have a good one.